will belong to everyone. Amen. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for the privilege we have to be called not just your sons and daughters, but servants and stewards in the vineyard of the Lord in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that you prepare us and you give us the victory. And we carry that victory to your people. And when we minister, you will make enemies bow under the feet of all your children and the whole church in Jesus' name. Grant everyone the victory of Calvary. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Tonight, we're looking at a few Psalms, Psalm 69, 70, 71, and 72. As we look at all these Psalms, we need to understand that David prayed for himself, he prayed for his family, he prayed for the nation, but then the spirit of prophecy got hold of him. And he looked ahead and he looked forward to Christ's coming. And when he prophesied about the enemy, the defeat of the enemy, deliverance from the enemy, and dominion over the enemy, the climax of his prayer is the prophecy concerning Christ's victory on the cross and Christ's victory after the cross for the church. And so we're looking at these Psalms and we're particularly picking out the verses referring to the Lord Jesus Christ and the victory that he would have. Tonight, the message is titled, Eternal Exaltation Above Emmanuel's Enemies. Eternal Exaltation Above Emmanuel's Enemies. We're coming to Psalm 69, verse 4. They that hate me without a cause are more than the heirs of mine head. You understand? That's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. They that will destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. When I then I restored that which I took not away. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, for the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. You remember how Christ fitted into that. And the reproaches of them that reproach thee are falling upon me. In verse 21 of that same psalm, they gave me also gall for my meal. And in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Verse 26 tells us, For they persecute him whom thou hast met him. The Father, God in heaven, laid our sins on him. He was wounded for our transgression. He was smitten by the Lord. He was stricken by the Lord. And here it says, For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten him. And they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. We come to Psalm 70 verse 4. In Psalm 70 verse 4, let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. As we come to the Lord and we're born again and we're following after the Lord, we're glad, we rejoice because our names are written in heaven and we have the salvation of the Lord and continually we praise the Lord and we say let God be continually magnified. Look at Psalm 71 verse 20. In Psalm 71, reading from verse 20, Thou which has showed me great and so troubles shall quicken me again and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Referring to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
that Christ will not remain in the depths of the earth. He will rise again. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, thou shalt increase my greatness. He has become great. That's the Lord Jesus Christ after his death and resurrection and comfort me on every side. Psalm 72 verse 7. In Psalm 72, reading from verse 7, in his days, ultimately referring to the Lord Jesus Christ after he has come and after he has paid the price for salvation and now he establishes the kingdom in our heart and in his church and in his days shall righteous shall the righteous flourish actually righteousness will flourish as you come to the lord in the days that christ rules he reigns in our heart he rules in our heart and righteousness will flourish and the righteous will flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you and he says he has given us his peace and we're told that Christ is our peace and it's the abundance of peace that he has given us and as long as the moon endure it that means as soon as long as the moon is still there the sun is still there the peace of God will reign in the hearts of the people that know the Lord look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says he shall have dominion also from sea to sea referring to our Lord Jesus Christ and referring to the time he'll be exalted and from the river unto the ends of the earth verse 17 of that same psalm his name shall endure forever the father has now given him a name above every name that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and it says his name shall endure forever he his name shall be continued as long as the sun. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by which we have salvation, by which we have victory, by which we have dominion, by which we have all the blessings that he purchased for us at Calvary. That name shall continue as long as the sun. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. As we look at those uh, verses, we are uh, discussing and instructing on three things today. Number one, past deliverances from enemies before he came. Before Jesus came, before his first coming, he granted uh, uh, deliverances unto people. You must remember that the people in the Old Testament, they were expecting the Messiah. And as they look forward to seeing the Messiah and getting or receiving the benefits of the Messiah who was still to come, the Lord granted them deliverances, past deliverances from enemies before he came or before his first coming. Point number two perfect dominion over the enemy on the cross perfect dominion over the enemy on the cross and he did that for us he did that as our substitute and whatever enemies we have they are his enemies Saul Saul why persecutest thou me because Saul was persecuting the church and Jesus Jesus said that amounts to persecuting him and he has perfect dominion complete dominion ultimate dominion final dominion over the enemy and he did that on the cross point number one is before the cross point number two is on the cross point number three is after the cross point number three now perpetual defeat in bracket damnation perpetual defeat perpetual damnation of all his enemies after his coronation after the cross there will be perpetual damnation and defeat for the people that remain adamant to be the enemy of christ and the enemy of the church until their time ends here on earth point number one now 
past deliverances from enemies before the first coming of Christ, before he came. Let's come back to Psalm 69, reading from verse 14. The reason why the psalmist had confidence to pray against his enemies is because he knew that God would grant him the victory. You might uh, be wondering, is it all right to pray against uh, one's enemies? In one, on one side, you are not praying that God will destroy them. You are not praying that God will kill them. You are not praying that God will judge them now and send them to hell now. But all the same, if you know you have been called as David was called, and David was to fulfill the ministry, it was right for him to pray that the enemy that will hinder him from doing the will of God, from fulfilling the will of God, and from accomplishing what God has raised him for, for his nation, Israel, that God will not allow them to have the victory over him. That was legitimate, and it is still legitimate today if you know you are called by the Lord. If you know that God has called you to a ministry, any enemy, whether Satan or the cohorts of Satan or those supporting Satan that will not allow the will of God and the salvation of God to be uh, given out or fulfilled through you, it's legitimate to tell God that God, you have chosen me to do this, appointed me to do this. You will not allow any enemy to derail and to destroy your calling upon my life, whatever will, you will do, push them aside so that I can still fulfill your will. Deliver me, said in verse 14, out of, out of the mire and let me not sing, let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. It was saying, them that hate me. And their hatred is so much, if that will consume my thoughts and will consume my life, and all I'll be thinking about is my enemy and the hatred they have against me, and I'm not even concentrating and thinking about the calling you have given me to be a leader in Israel, to be a leader in the house of God. All I can think about in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening is enemy, enemy, and hatred. Oh, Lord, grant me the victory over all those enemies so that I can concentrate on the calling you have given me. Let's look at Psalm 70 verse 1. In Psalm 70 reading from verse 1, it tells us here, still praying to the Lord. Let's make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste, O oh Lord, I am making haste, I am hurrying, I want to do the will of God. I need to get there, I need to get there, I need to go there. And I need to fulfill the calling you have given me. And there is an enemy that is standing in my way. Oh Lord, because I want to get to the destination you have appointed for me, make haste and clear him and clear them out of the way so I can move on and do your will. You will do the will of God. That's why you said, Lord, what I need to do today must be done. And if you don't deliver me today and they hinder me and they debar me and they tie me up and they hold me back and they imprison me and I cannot do what I need to do today, then the point is the enemy would have succeeded in destroying your will and your plan for me. Therefore, Lord, make haste, deliver me to make, make haste to help me. Oh Lord, and he tells us in verse 2, it says in verse 2, let them be ashamed and confounded that seek my soul. I need to remain alive so that I can seek others to save. I need to remain alive so that I will destroy the enemies of the nation and so that the promise you gave Abraham concerning the children of Israel will be fulfilled. And I am the one you have appointed at this time to make that a fulfillment, that the nation of Israel will be number one in all the world. And now, 
these enemies, they want to hinder that. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backwards and put to confusion that desire my heart. Enemies will not hurt you. They will not succeed in Jesus' name. There is a lot to do for the child of God. And the child of God cannot spend all his life under the load, under the yoke, under the burden, under the oppression of an enemy. We must be delivered from the enemy so that we can do the will of God. And thank God you are delivered. Look at Psalm 71. Psalm 71, we're reading from verse 9. Psalm 1 verse 9 Cast me not off in the time of old age Now understand This uh, was a man who was not uh, You know relaxing on armchair arm And saying I am old now He said at old age I still want to keep on serving you And there are people that will say Now that they couldn't catch him When he was younger They couldn't catch him When he was full of strength And then he was pursuing the goal That he ought to pursue you now they say the man is old because of that he has old age is uh, it you see crisis old age uh, deficiencies old age diseases this they think or they thought that when you are getting old normally there are the weakness is even there the weakness of the body the weakness of the mind and the forgetfulness in your brain and then all those deficiencies tying you down we couldn't get him at that time but he's still having passion he's still having zeal he's still having pursuit at this time now we will get him they will not get you at old age they will not get you and when it appears your strength is failing supernatural so strength will come upon your life in jesus name and that's why david said cast me not off in the time of old age forsake me not when my strength faileth is referring to uh, the feeling of strength and then the back is bent and the shoulders are down and there is there could be arthritis on the knees and then in the ankle and all the joints of the body and things are not the way they used to be and you have something is moving there something is moving there and then he says then i cannot do what i need to do he says but the vision is still there the passion is still there the work is still there to be done he says therefore forsake me not when my strength faileth your strength will not fail and the Lord will not forsake you in Jesus' name. Did the Lord answer his prayer? Look at Psalm 18. We're reading from verse, we're reading from verse 48. Psalm 18, reading from verse 48. It says, He delivereth me from mine enemies. He said, I want to give a testimony. I'm still able to do what I'm doing and you will keep on doing what you ought to do because he will always deliver you. If he did that in the past, he will do that, he will do it in the present. If he did it before the cross, now that Christ has gone to the cross and he has sacrificed and he said, it is finished. They had deliverance then, you must have deliverance today. <coughs> It says, Yea, thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me. You lifted me up, and you are lifting me up against all those people that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me. Thou hast delivered me. That will be your confession. Thou hast delivered me. That will be your testimony. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. As you look at the world in which we live now, maybe there are some streets you don't want to cross because of the violent man. Maybe there are some roads you don't want to travel on because of the violent man. But you know, nothing will cut short your life. 
all that God has promised, all that God has ordained concerning you, everything will be done in Jesus' name. The older you are supposed to get, the younger you will be. And as your day, so shall your strength be in Jesus' name. Look at verse 49 there. In verse 49, therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. And then in verse 50, in verse 50 it says, Great deliverance giveth he to his king. Great deliverance giveth he to his king. Now you need to understand that God needs you. God needed the king. Now there are people that think we need God, but God does not need us. That's wrong. God needed the king in Israel because he had something to do and he wanted to raise up that nation and he wanted that nation to receive all the blessings of Abraham and he needed somebody that would be in the forefront and be a leader spiritually for them be a leader physically for them and be a leader naturally for them if that nation is going to fulfill the calling of God upon the nation God needed a man actually God said I'm looking for a man, I'm searching for a man, and eventually he said, I found the man. I found David, the son of Jesse, that will fulfill all my will. He needed him, and because he needed him, great deliverance giveth he to his king, to the king he has chosen. When God has chosen you, and God has appointed you to lead and to preach and to do something for the kingdom of God, you understand he needed you. You need him and he also needs you. And then he says he showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. And I pray that as we have this understanding, we will go on in the ministry God has ordained for us, and we will do what he has called us to do in Jesus' name. Uh, let's come to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, reading from verse 14. In Exodus chapter 14, reading from verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Now, let's understand. Uh, you see, when we read the word of God, we have to make proper application for ourselves. Now, God sent Moses to Pharaoh. And he said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, I don't know that God understand. God had an interest in the deliverance of the children of Israel. Why? Because if they remained in, in Egypt and they were assimilated with the Egyptians, his covenant with Abraham will not be fulfilled because he had said he will bring the descendants of Abraham to a land flowing with milk and honey. If that did not happen, God will be perceived as being unable, unfaithful, and therefore God had to take the children of Israel to the land of Canaan. And eventually now all those miracles were performed and Pharaoh eventually said, okay, you can go. And then he turned around and said, why should they go? I'm going to pursue after them, understand? If he got to the children of Israel at that time at the Red Sea, if he conquered them, all the miracles of Egypt, over Egypt, would have been wasted. And God will not waste his power, will not waste all those miracles. God had an interest, vested interest, that these children of Israel will cross over. God has an interest in your life. He has given you salvation. He has called you into the ministry. If he allows enemies to crush you and to destroy you, that's uh, all that he has done is wasted. The blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you will be wasted. That blood will not be wasted. 
the Lord shall fight for you. He must. The Lord must fight for you. Anywhere you are, you understand you are a special person. You are chosen by the Lord. And because of that choice of the Lord, for all that he has done and is called not to be wasted in your life, he must still continue protecting you. He will protect you. I said he will protect you. How many stories have you heard since all this pandemic started? This one, that one, that one, that one. And yet, look at you today, you are strong. Look at you today, you are healthy. Look at you today, your brain is still what it ought to be. Your brain, your head is correct. My own brain is correct. Everything is all right because God has vested interest in you. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Look at verse 24. In verse 24 it says, and it came to pass. Do you remember our November coming to pass? It shall come to pass. In your life it shall come to pass. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and it troubled the host of the Egyptians. He will trouble them. Your enemies, he will trouble them. Enemies of progress, he will trouble them. God said that he has chosen you that you will go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain then a man a puny man a little man whose breath in his, is in his nostril he said i'm going to walk against the call of god upon your life and that place the lord is taking you to i'm going to prove myself stronger than god and you will not get there that man will be surprised because God will trouble that man and he will leave you alone. Say, they will leave me alone. Say, they have let me alone. The Lord gave, the Lord gave the victory. And then it says in verse 25, in verse 25, and took off their chariots' wheels and they that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said their enemies said let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians God said I'll fight for you Moses said God will fight for you the enemies themselves confessed that God was fighting against the Egyptians on behalf of Israel. I am safe. I am secured. No enemy will conquer you. Joshua chapter 21. In Joshua chapter 21, we're reading from verse 44. Joshua chapter 21 verse 44 and the Lord gave them rest round about as we're going back home understand all around your house all around your community all around your family your children going to school your children going to work coming back and yourself and your wife and your husband rest and peace and security all around you in Jesus name according to all that is where unto their fathers and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them they stood not a man of all their enemies before them the lord delivered all their enemies into their hands look at uh, verse 45 now verse 45 says they failed not aught of any good thing which the lord had spoken unto the house of israel all came to pass they will not fail say they will not fail any jot or tito of all good things when the lord has spoken concerning me 
all will come to pass everything will be fulfilled the lord was faithful to them and the lord will be faithful to you in jesus name look at psalm 32 in psalm 32 we're reading from verse 6 psalm 32 verse 6 for they shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him look at verse 7 in verse 7 thou art my hiding place thou art my hiding place thou shalt preserve me from trouble thou shalt compass me about of songs of deliverance be it so in your life in jesus name that was before the cross let's now look at what happens on the cross let's come to point number two perfect dominion over the enemy on the cross we're coming to psalm 72 verse 8 psalm 72 we're reading from verse 8 he shall have dominion also from sea to sea this one goes beyond david and it goes beyond solomon the son of david it goes far away to the future concerning the son of david the lord jesus christ he shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth and he is our savior and he is a substitute and he is the final sacrifice he is the one that says i will never leave you i will never forsake you he is the one that said come to my side here and be seated together with me in heavenly places and if he shall have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth anywhere you are on this earth you will share in that dominion in jesus name because we're co-heirs with christ and we're joint heirs with the lord and because of that if you're a joint heir with him if you're a co-heir with him and you share in his victory and you share in his triumph when he has that dominion you too you will have dominion and look at verse 11 in verse 11 yea all kings shall fall down before him and all nations shall serve him he's talking about christ emmanuel he's talking about christ our savior he's talking about christ our redeemer it says all kings shall fall down before him all nations shall serve him we're coming to psalm 110 and we're reading from verse 1 psalm 110 verse 1 the lord said unto my lord you see that the lord that's god the father said unto my lord that's the lord jesus christ sit thou at my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool until i make thine enemies thy footstool that's talking about the victory of christ and let's come to acts chapter 2 verse 34 acts of the apostles chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 34 that you will know that what we have read in psalm 110 now sit down on my right hand until i make thy foes thine enemies thy footstool is talking about christ and is talking about the dominion he had on the cross of calvary it says for david is not ascended into the heavens but he says himself the lord said unto my lord sit thou on my right hand is quoting from the psalms and he said that's not applicable to david but to another person look at the next verse until i make thy foes thine enemies thy footstool look at the conclusion now in verse 36 in verse 36 therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that god has made that same jesus 
whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. You crucified him, he rose from the dead, and the Father, the Heavenly Father, our God in heaven, has made him Lord and Christ. He has dominion, and you will share part of that dominion in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 1, we're reading from verse 3. In Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory. You remember that's talking about Christ. In these last days, he is speaking to us by his son whom he appointed. And he says that son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power upholding the stars the sun the moon the planets the universe the earth upholding all things by the word of his power he has dominion he says when he had by himself purged our sins he sat down at the right hand of majesty on high that's Christ. He has dominion, and that dominion he will exercise on your behalf, on my behalf, on behalf of his church in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8, the first part. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from the first part of verse 8, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet because of Calvary, because of the shedding of his blood because of his doing the will of god and because of fulfilling all that the father had said that thou will bruise his heel and he will bruise your head now god has put all things in subjection under his feet satan under his feet evil spirits under his feet demons under his feet and the wickedness of the world all the enemies of the world under his feet and praise god anyone that decides is going to be your enemy is under the feet of jesus christ he overcame you have overcome thou has put not that you will do it it is done already he has that dominion already that was put all things in subjection under his feet look at uh, verse 14 of that hebrews chapter 2 we're reading from verse 14 for as much then as the children a partakers of flesh and blood he also himself referring to christ that has dominion he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil he has had dominion he has dominion and it will destroy even the one that has the power of death, the devil. And you hear your amen? amen? The devil might be planning because he cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He would have wanted to destroy the church. He would have wanted to destroy the saints of God, every believer. He would have wanted to get rid of them if he had the chance. But the Lord has destroyed his power. He would have wanted a believer to die before his time. But the Lord has destroyed his power. He would have wanted a kind of disease, incurable disease, to come upon somebody who says, I'm a follower of Christ and I'm going to, you know, endure until the end. And the devil, if the devil had all that power that people think he has, and he can do anything, anytime he wants to do it, and he can kill anyone he wants to kill at any time, he would have killed the believers who are in the form front and are taking people away from his kingdom away from his dominion and bringing them to christ but you know he cannot touch you 
because the Lord Jesus in having dominion he has destroyed him that has the power of death that is the devil he has destroyed him on your behalf you are free in Jesus name look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. There are people that go to surrender themselves into bondage, in the bondage of occultism and the bondage of idolatry because they are looking for protection. But we don't need all that. Do you need that? I said, do you need that? Because already he has delivered us from the power of him that can hold anyone in bondage. Ours is dominion in Jesus' name. And let's look at uh, chapter 10 of that Hebrews and we're looking at verse, uh, we're looking at uh, verse 12. It says in verse 12 of chapter 10, it says, for this man, talking about Christ after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down on the right hand of God he sat down because everything is done it is accomplished and it is finished everything he ought to have done for you everything he ought to have purchased for you from the time of your conversion until the time you meet him face to face every power you hope to have every victory you ought to have everything every grace you ought to have every opportunity you ought to have every answer to your prayer you ought to receive the lord has accomplished everything and after you accomplish everything your salvation your sanctification your power of the holy ghost and your answer prayer and your fulfillment and your fullness everything that will make you the man the woman you ought to be everything accomplished sins forgiven and then total freedom for you now he sat down on the right hand of god look at verse 13 in verse 13 from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool look at verse 14 there it says but for by one offering he has perfected forever for by one offering he has completed forever he has fulfilled forever he has accomplished forever that uh, yes uh, for, for by one offering uh, he has perfected forever them uh, that are sanctified it's mine i said it's mine let's come to daniel daniel chapter 7 we're reading from verse 13 daniel chapter 7 we're reading from verse 13 now and i saw in the night visions behold and behold one like who one like i said who the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him christ the son of man near before him what happened look at verse 14 in verse 14 and there was given him dominion the Father gave him dominion. God in heaven gave him dominion. Final authority. And there was no part of dominion that had not been given unto him. He gave him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. Any amen in the church? which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed his kingdom i am part of that kingdom you are part of that kingdom and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed look at the first line there of that chapter 7 verse 14 and there was given him tell me dominion he has dominion why did he have dominion? How is it he has dominion? Look at verse 27 of that same chapter. In verse 27, that's Daniel chapter 7, verse 27, it says, And the kingdom and dominion 
and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him i told you before and here is here is it that the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall now be given to the people of the saints of the most high as children of god as sons and daughters of god as saints of god we now share in that dominion i have victory you have victory we will retain that victory in jesus name before we go away from that let's look at romans chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 20 romans chapter 16 and we're reading here from verse 20 and the god of peace shall bruise satan under your feet shortly the god of peace shall put satan under your feet shortly the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you amen. good amen. amen as rendering amen. amen let's come to point number three now point number three is the perpetual defeat of all his enemies after the coronation the perpetual damnation of all the enemies of Christ after the coronation is gone to heaven now, but is coming back. And when he comes back, all those who remain enemies of the cross till the end, enemies of Calvary until the end, enemies of Christ until the end, and enemies of the church unto the end there'll be the final defeat there'll be the ultimate defeat and there'll be the eternal damnation for such enemies we're coming back to psalm 69 psalm 69 and we're reading from verse 21 in verse 21 psalm 69 they gave me also gold for my meat and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink you understand that's talking about christ and then he says in verse 22 he says let their table become a snare before them and that which should have been uh, which should have been for their welfare let it become a trap in verse 23 it says let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continually shake in verse 24 it says pour out thine indignation pour out the judgment pour out the damnation upon them and let the wrathful anger take hold of them look at verse 25 it says and their habitation let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents you see he's talking about the enemies of christ and those enemies of christ in particular he spoke about judas iscariot look at the fulfillment acts chapter 1 we're reading from verse 16 acts chapter 1 we're reading from verse 16 it says men and brethren this scripture must needs have been fulfilled which the holy ghost speak which the holy ghost by the mouth of david speak concerning judas which was guide to them that took jesus is referring to the psalm we just read now and then it says in verse 17 as uh, as he talks about judas for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry in verse 18 it says 
Now this man purchased a field which with the reward of iniquity. You see that? Judas Iscariot purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Just like Balaam that had the wages of iniquity. And just like many people that have love of money and then they destroy other people's lives so that they can have their way and they can have the wealth that doesn't belong to them. They purchase fields with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And then in verse 19, it says, And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much as that field is called in their proper tongue a seldom man. That is to say, the field of blood. And then in verse 20, it tells us in verse 20, For it is written in the book of the Psalms, that's what we have read, that's what we are studying, it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric <clears throat> is office to another let another take now it's not only judas Iscariot, but all those children of israel what did they say look at matthew chapter 27 in matthew chapter 27 reading from verse 25 it says in verse 25 then answered all the people and said his blood be upon us and all our children on all our children they said we hate him and he will not reign over us he will not be the messiah he will not be the christ he will not be the lord he'll not be the king of the jews we don't want him and the pilot said but what has he done they said don't worry about what he has done what he has not done crucify him and let his blood be on us and all and our children look at luke chapter 19 in luke chapter 19 we're reading from verse 14 luke chapter 19 reading from verse 14 but the citizens the citizens hated him and they sent a message after him saying we will not have this man reign over us. Understand, the heavenly father had concluded in heaven that Christ will have dominion from sea to sea and Christ will have dominion from one shore to the other shore. But he said, no, we don't accept what God, the creator of the whole earth, what he has decided. He said, I have set my son upon my holy hill of Zion. They said, no, we don't want that. And we're going to get rid of him. And this, it says, but the citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us that's why there's going to be a perpetual eternal damnation of all those enemies when he's crowned and coronated look at matthew chapter 23 matthew chapter 23 verse 33 in matthew chapter 23 verse 33 ye serpents Ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? That's for them, by the grace of God, because we believe I'm a believer. I said I'm a believer. I lost the voice of my people. I'm a believer. Because of that, damnation will not be yours in Jesus' name. We own him our king. We accept him our king. He has dominion and we come under his authority. Therefore, salvation is ours, new life ours, and protection ours, and all the enemies that hate Christ and they want to revenge on us, they will not touch us in Jesus' name. 
let's come back to the Psalms. As we come back to the Psalms, we're reading from Psalm 71, verse 9. Psalm 71, we're reading from verse 9. It says, Cast me not off in the time of old age. Can you say that? Cast me not off in the time of old age. Say it with conviction. Say it as your prayer. And say it as if you are making a confession before the Lord. Cast me not up in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. When my physical strength, natural strength, when that strength is likely to fail because of old age forsake me not look at verse 10 in verse 10 for mine enemies speak against me at that time of the old age david was saying they might be thinking i'm not as strong as when i killed goliath they might think i'm not as strong when i went to all those places and then where courage and confidence of faith I overcame because of that. Those enemies might come now at the time of old age when physical strength is failing. But he said, my enemies speak against me and they lay wait for my soul. They take counsel together. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, O God, thou hast taught me from my youth and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. It was not just a warrior, it was a witness. And it was giving the watch of God to the people of his generation. That's why he wrote all the Psalms that we're reading now and the message of the Psalm and the power, the prophecy and the promises of the Psalms and the prayers and the praises of God in the Psalms. They're still useful today and the ministry of David from the uh, writing from the Psalms, they still continue. It said, you taught me from my youth and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Look at verse 18 now. In verse 18 now, now at this time also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not. O God, forsake me not. Oh God, forsake me not. I thought you'd say it for yourself. Why was David praying now that he was old and gray-headed and he's saying, I still want your power to be present with me and I still want the confidence and the courage of those earlier years to still be present with me? Why was he praying like that? Look at this. Until I have showed thy strength unto this generation. He said, even though I'm old and gray-headed, I still want to keep on preaching. I still want to keep on prophesying and proclaiming your word unto the people until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. And thy power to everyone that is to come. That's what he has done. We were not there at that time. We were not born at that time. We were still to come. And now we have come and we have met that message of David that was recorded down, that has been preserved for us, and we are benefiting from all the message that he had given. He has showed it to his generation, and he is showing it to us who are now at the people that are to come. Do you understand that God wants you to still trust him in old age, and in old age, if Jesus tarries, you'll get older. If Jesus tarries at the time of old age, you'll be stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. And you will still be doing the work of the Lord and the work of God will keep on prospering in your hand in Jesus' name. Let's look at Philemon chapter 1. Philemon chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 9. Philemon chapter 1, only one chapter, uh, verse 9. It says, 
and this Philemon. I said, Philemon, open your Bible to Philemon. Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, be such and one as Paul the agent. Look at that. Look at that. Not only David, but even Paul the apostle. He said, I'm writing to you, Philemon. And he said in verse 10, you'll see when we read it, that I, I witnessed and I got a convert. And that convert, Onesimus, I'm sending him back to you at his old age. At the old age, you will not give up. <laughs> old age, you will not stop preaching. Old age, you'll not stop your ministry. You will continue in the strength, in the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Yet, for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, be such and one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He was still suffering persecution, imprisonment, and even then he said, I'm still at it. You'll be at it forever until you go to meet the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, I beseech thee for my son, Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Paul the aged, Paul the old man, still evangelizing and still witnessing and still bringing sinners into the kingdom and making the transforming power of the Lord to have effect in their lives. He said, my son Onesimus, I begotten him in my bonds. He was delivered from all enemies and delivered from all diseases so that he could continue the work the Lord has given him. The Lord will grant you such deliverance. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, we're reading from verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 17, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me old man and strengthened me aged Paul and strengthened me he was strengthening you oh you said how do we know he was aged at this time because this was the last epistle he wrote he wrote this much after he had wrote he had written the one to Philemon and in Philemon he said it's Paul the aged and writing this is still Paul the aged and he said notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me old Paul aged Paul that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the gentiles Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered from the mouth of the lion. And you are delivered from the mouth of the lion. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, and the Lord shall deliver me, and the Lord shall deliver me, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen let's finish up with psalm 92 psalm 92 we're reading from verse 12 psalm 92 reading from verse 12 the righteous shall flourish, flourish like the palm tree it shall grow like a cedar in Babylon, in Lebanon. Let me read that again. The righteous, are they in the house? The righteous, where are they? The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13, in verse 13, those that be planted in the house of the Lord, are they there? Yes. Shall flourish in the courts of our God. Yes. You will flourish in the house of God. Yes. Verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Yes. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Yes. They shall be fat and flourishing. Yes. You'll be fruitful. Yes. You'll flourish. The power of God will keep on increasing in your life. 
as you grow older you'll grow stronger i said as you grow older you'll get stronger and this work will continue to prosper in your hands in jesus name they shall still bring forth fruit in old age they shall be fat and flourishing we rise up now and we claim all the blessings of the lord he has pronounced proclaimed upon us tonight there is no enemy that can stop you he has uh, he has had dominion because of you and that dominion will take effect in your life in jesus name open your mouth and talk to the lord Let's open our mouths and pray unto the Lord.